Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic, and today we're going to be talking about another amazing article. Uh, so we had two really great days over the weekend of common sense articles. The last one I talked about was from The Motley Fool, not The Motley Crew, like I said uh, one time in, in the video that I made the other day, which a lot of people apparently appreciated. So uh, <laughs> kudos to y'all for pointing that out. But I was actually going to be talking about this article. This is another Cantina Talk from Wired.com, and it says, Is the end nigh for Star Wars story movies? And I think we all pretty much know the answer to that. And the reason why I want to talk about it is because it just goes into that same you know, political nonsense, that narrative nonsense. But I found an even better article to go over today. But I did want to show this before I go. Is This is indeed the Weibo ripoff from Flubber. Uh, someone pointed this out to me uh, about a month ago, and I just cannot get it out of my, wa- <laughs> out of my mind. But all I could say about L337, the best droid ever. May she rest in pieces. Uh, but no, this is the article instead. This is from The Observer. And this is by someone called Film Crit. Hulk, and it says, the beautiful, ugly, and possessive hearts of Star Wars, and I think that you can already tell from that that there are certain key words in there that seem to be implying the kind of tone that this overall film is going to, or rather this article is going to take. So he starts off saying, the tower. It's very dramatic. I've seen, I've never seen a popular conversation go as far off the rails as I have with Star Wars. Now well, let's let's see where he goes with that. While the vast majority of people have simple feelings about the franchise one way or the other, it has suddenly become dominated by unfettered arguments, toxic harshness, boycotts, petitions for films to be struck from the canon, petitions to outright remake films, petitions for firings, and even full-on racist and sexist harassment campaigns, the lowly depths of which have been covered by observers Brandon Katz. Well, again, this is the same old narrative. This is the same narrative they use for Kelly Moon Tran. There is no evidence that she got off social media because of be- of people being racist and sexist. Are there people who were racist and sexist towards her? Yeah. There are people who are racist and sexist towards any person that's online, any person that has a big following online, especially people with a big following online because there are a small, small group Less than one percent of the people out there who are just have a disgusting worldview, who are gonna, ha- you know, put those things out there, and you can't just put an entire movement, you can't just put an entire group of people, Star Wars fans, in that same boat. It just doesn't work. So we're already off to a really good start here. Since I wrote my brief article on how I like the central message of Last Jedi, I've been inundated with angry messages, been called a shill for Disney. Well, I'm sorry, at this point, you pretty much seem to be coming off as a shill, a hack, a hypocrite, someone who clearly has been paid off, and a crusading SJW. Again, so far it sounds about right. So can you please prove that otherwise? Let's see. But all this has really done is expose a subset of toxic fandom that was made so upset by certain choices in these new films that they'll desperately resort to conspiracy theories as well as weaponize the bold-faced racism and sexism that so nakedly rests under their skin. Okay, so because someone disagrees with you, because someone calls you a shill, because someone calls you an SJW, which again, just means that you are a liberal person who is trying to push that liberal agenda on other people and call people like you are now racist and sexist. So yes, you have proven yourself not only to be an SJW, but you You've also proven yourself now to be a shill as well. So yeah, just just by that own statement, by you saying that the people who criticize you are weaponizing boldface racism and sexism that rests under their skin. It's like I'm sorry if someone is a racist or sexist or is sexist, they're gonna make it pretty damn clear. Just because they disagree with you does not make them a racist or a sexist. I'm sorry that just that just that, that's not how the world works. That's not how reality or common sense works. So. Please come back to us. I mean, I guess I really don't care all that much, but at the same time, I'm just so sick and tired of this narrative being put out there. So you've already lost any chance that I was going to give you because you are proving yourself to be an SJW and you are proving yourself to be a shill on top of that. So please wake up, sir, because you have no idea what you're talking about. Again, just because someone disagrees with your opinion on something does not make them a racist. Simple as that. There's a lot I could say about this, and I'll touch on some of it later, but the truth is I have no interest in validating any of their hateful rhetoric rhetoric with an actual debate. So yeah, this is something that we've seen on Twitter a lot lately, is that they think to themselves, oh, I'm I'm so high and mighty, I am the one who has the high ground, and so therefore I'm not even going to engage in a discussion with you. I'm just going to block you because you're obviously just a racist or a sexist, and the only evidence I have for that, oh, is because you don't agree with me on an opinion of a film. That's, again, that's not how it works. So you're already proving yourself to be a, a a hack. Like, again, every single name that you were called that you said that you aren't, you are now proving yourself to be those things. You are a hack because you will say something and then you will not engage in a discussion with someone who disagrees with you. You would rather just say, oh, you're a racist and sexist. It's, it's underneath the skin. It's not. It may not be overt, but I see it because I'm smarter. I am a pseudo-intellectual and I know all these things. It's like, no, 
Get out of your own head. Get your head out of your ass. And I'm sorry, you have no idea what you're talking about. So it has no place here. Oh, sure. They represent the vestigial tale of white male fragility. Really, talk to Anna, that Star Wars girl. Talk to... Um, uh, talk to Jesse Milestone, talk to uh, my boy Jeff Cotto, talk to every single person that I just mentioned who is neither <laughs> who is not a man or possibly not a man and not also white as well. So I'm sorry, but your your opinion has no real credibility here because, again, you're not basing any of this in reality. You think that you're correct because you're a pseudo-intellectual, and that's pretty much all you have there. So, again, check out those channels because... They'll prove this person completely wrong, and this is why you are a hack, sir. You are absolutely a hack, based on this fact that you, you have obviously not done any research whatsoever. So they represent the vestigial tale of white male fragility uh, that seems to have a last grasp stranglehold on this country. Oh, now you're, now you're again, yeah, see, see, now you're connecting it to the whole alt-right thing and Donald Trump and all this stuff. Like that. A lot of people that I talk to, a lot of people that are, feel the same way I do about Star Wars and the direction it's been going and about SJWs are not all conservative. Some of them are actually very liberal in their positions, and most of them did not vote and do not support Donald Trump. So you're already off the rails. You, again, have not done your research. You have no idea what you're talking about. So, And they have determined to take us down with them. I don't give one single – oh, well, that's not very nice to put in an article – uh, one single crap about them. Um, my my boy Nemesis will will appreciate the fact that I uh, that I say this this guy this hack is not going to get me so easily. Nemesis, you might get me one day. Uh, they can die mad about it. Are you wishing death upon people? That's not very nice. That's not very peaceful and loving of you. I don't like that at all. What I do very much give a crap about, however, is the larger conversation where there are people who you know. You know, you put that in an article. Again, I'm not great either. I'm not I'm not perfect in my speech or in my writing, but you're on observer.com. This is supposed to be a media site. This is supposed to be a news site and you're you're, you're cursing in your articles and now you're actually writing in you know. That's something that you use in conversation. That's not something. And also it's a placeholder that you use in conversation. In fact, in my speech class that I took in 8th grade, I was pretty much destroyed every time I use like, you know, in conversation. Do I still use it in conversation? Yeah, because I'm a human person. I make mistakes. But you're using it in an article. You had an editor, and you still have this in here. Oh, man, you are totally a hack, and you just don't see it. And I'm sorry. Again, I gave, I was willing to give you a chance, but you've just gone off the rails completely. <laughs> just didn't like some of the recent Star Wars film. And that's totally cool. All I really want to do in this essay, it's an essay, is to get a heart to the why. This would be normally less of a problem, but since we all find ourselves having to engage with the aforementioned toxic bunch, no, you are the toxic bunch. You are the ones, the SJWs are the toxic ones who are bringing this conversation down into the dirt. Y'all are the ones that are doing this because you're the one that's labeling every single person that does not agree with your political philosophy or agree with this political philosophy, philosophy being forced down people's throats into a film as a racist or excessive, even though there's no basis in reality for that. So no, y'all y'all are the ones that are toxic, not uh, not this community. Again, very small, one percent, less than one percent. Sure. Again, anyone's going to be anyone on YouTube, anyone who lives in the real world is going to say, yeah, there are despicable, despicable people out there. Our group, though, as far as like the community that we have, for the most part, not those people, not those people. So he says uh, it becomes really, oh man, man, this website sucks. Uh, it's a hard to navigate discussion with each other, probably because it feels so much like as at stake. This is precisely why larger conversations need to be moderated. The troglodytes suck up the space for rationality and common ground. Well, thank you for using one of my favorite words and destroying it. Now I don't like that word anymore because you used it in this stupid article. Uh, no one is ever happy. Oh man, this website sucks. It's jumping on me. No one is ever happy about getting lumped in with troglodytes. Okay, you don't, again, I'm not perfect at speech, but when you are writing something, it's a good idea not to use a big word two times in a row. Just just saying, it's not very good writing. So I understand why people get defensive, but when people reply to criticism with a kind of not all Star Wars fans mantra, they often miss the point of the criticism being made, especially because I've seen a fair amount of these same I'm not a troglodyte, again, using it again, defenders toss off opinions that exemplify the exact kinds of subconscious racism and self-sexism that those same troglodytes, okay, you're using that word way too much, proclaim loudly, and again, you're throwing out racism and sexism so easily, again, you are the reason. People like you are the reason why those words don't mean anything or not nearly as much as they once did in society. If you call someone a racist or a sexist just because they disagree with you, that just take, totally demeans and waters down what the term is actually meant for. So, yeah, I do have a problem with what you're saying because not only is it wrong, but also you're just misusing these words in such a way. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I know no one likes to believe they're guilty of any kind of is behavior because sometimes there's a larger reason that they get lumped in with folks who are spitting hate. So please be careful and open your heart and open your mind to a larger conversation. How about you open your mind and your heart to a larger conversation? You're obviously the one that's putting yourself into this tiny little bubble. Why don't you come out and engage? You're the one that says, I don't engage with conversation with the people that I deem 
to be racist and sexist. Well, how about you branch out a little bit? Because, you know, even people who attack me or who are total trolls, I at least engage with them hoping that maybe they'll engage back. When they don't, that's when I ignore them because if they're just going to troll me, that's one thing. But if someone's trying to engage with you conversation, they don't agree with you, and you just say, oh, I'm just not going to engage with you because it's not worth my time, that's you being a pseudo-intellectual, and it doesn't help your case. Uh, because this is an essay about why we love Star Wars, I don't. I'm not really seeing. I'm not really seeing that yet, and I don't think I'm going to get through this whole article before because this website is just. I mean, oh my goodness, I'm already up back to up to the top. This is just. This website, man, is just awful. All right, because of Star. So it's about why Star Wars makes certain uh, certain things. It's about why we can't ever seem to agree on those things. Are it's about what we really want out of these movies. It's about what it moves us or why it doesn't move us. It's about the qualities we see in obvious and objective problems within it. It's about everything. And this essay has to be about everything because the popular conversation has completely lost its way. It is as if we were all in the biblical tower of Babel. Okay, you're using that biblical language and yet you were cursing in your article earlier, so you're not really making your points. Unable to speak of some a same language, so of course everyone feels misunderstood, entangled up in the rancor. Pun intended. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> That was so funny. Uh, thus, I only have one goal, which is not for us to agree. Wait, so you... Okay. I just want us to start speaking the same language. Okay, that's on you, man. That's on you. If you start speaking in reality and using common sense terms, we will totally be there with you. We will totally meet you there, but you got to be there first. Again, if you're just ignoring people, that's one thing. The core returns. So why do we care about Star Wars so damn much? All right. So yeah, I'm not going to read all this article because this is just... Oh my goodness. All right, so why we love Star Wars. The, the reason why we love Star Wars, those three right there. Those, what do you see there? You see three strong characters and three really talented actors. That's what you see there. Guess what we don't see in today's Star Wars? Talented actors and strong characters. You might get one or the other, but we don't really get both in today's Star Wars. So, yeah, that's why we love Star Wars. Those three people right there. And also, thanks to the likes of J.J. Abrams and also <laughs> thanks to the likes of uh, Ryan Johnson, we are never going to see the big three, those three right there. Oh, man, this site sucks. Those three right there, we're never going to see those faces on the same screen ever again. We could have had it in The Force Awakens before Carrie Fisher died, but guess what? That didn't happen because they decided to kill Han Solo off before even any of that happened because Luke was off on an island doing something. Oh, man, it's part of our DNA, the new MO. Welcome to the third era of Star Wars. This sounds like third-wave feminism. So, I mean, yeah, we are in third-wave fe feminism, and guess what? None of us like it. None of us want that because feminism does – I mean, we shouldn't have that political nonsense in – again, nothing's wrong with feminism, real feminism, like first, second-wave feminism of people actually pushing for equality and equal rights. It's another thing to force a political ideology on someone else. That's third-wave feminism, and it's disgusting. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the new crew. That's the crew right there. That's – oh, and – oh, my goodness. There she is. There – oh, my goodness. There she is. There's the one. There's the one right there. She has destroyed Star Wars. Destroyed it. She has destroyed it. Uh, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> is there anything else worth talking about here? The Last Jedi of all. Okay. So, this is what I'm going to talk about because this is talking about The Last Jedi. So, there's no mistaking that The Last Jedi has become the bellwether for how you approach the larger goals of Star Wars fandom. Truthfully, I don't really care to debate whether the film is good or bad. Well, it's bad. The question I'm much more interested in is why exactly did this film make a subsection of the fandom so damn upset? Well, because it was a bad film. And also, he wanted it to be – again, Ryan Johnson's gone on record saying, I want my films to be films that 50% of the audiences hate. So, that's what he did, and now people are questioning, well, I don't understand why. That's because he made the film that way, and you shouldn't do that with Star Wars. All right, so in that discussion, it should be noted that the angry subsection would very much like everyone to believe that it's a 50-50 split. Well, it's a lot closer than y'all would like to think that, especially after they dive bomb the Rotten Tomatoes score. That was just honest people being you know, honest about it, which stands in a stark opposition to the 91% critical rate. Yeah, again, the, that they swore were paid off. Well, again, I'm not going to say that they were all paid off. I'm going to say that some of them may have been paid off for their positive review, but also, too, they were 91% of liberal SJW critics who liked the liberal SJW agenda being put into Star Wars, which should not have any of that nonsense into it. Whatever we make of the historians, I've anecdotally found that the non-likers are a small group making up 20% of the fandom, but they are just rather vocal about it. Well, 20% is not small. Again, if you were going to say like 5%, that's actually a lot higher than I thought you were going to give. 20% is a very large chunk of the community. Also, keep in mind, in that 20%, 20%, you have people who are buying not only the Blu-rays, not only the special editions, but also all the merchandise. So yes, that 20% is very loud and is very important because those are the diehard, those are the diehard serious fans. Again, I'm not saying that anyone that likes The Last Jedi is not a diehard fan, but and that 20%, you will find almost every single one of those persons is a diehard fan. Just saying. 
All right. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm just done with this article. So, guys, have you read this article? What do you think about this person? I mean, have you read anything from TheObserver.com? This is like the first time that I've really seen anything about it. Man, this person goes on and on and on. So, yeah, if you want to check it out, there it is, Observer.com. I'm not going to link to this in the YouTube you know, because it's just – I'm sorry, but I don't, I don't really want to help this person give clicks. So, this is just the nonsense that we're dealing with. Again, this is the nonsense we're dealing with today in today's Star Wars. We're dealing with people like Film Crick Hulk who just have no idea what's going on. They live in their tiny little bubble they think they're right about everything in reality they're not they they have no leg to stand on so what do you guys think let me know in the comments below if you like this video please hit that thumbs up please hit that subscribe as well we're very very close to a thousand subscribers and if you watch any of my live streams and if you have actually if you don't watch my live streams please join us we do it almost every single night around 8 p.m central standard time i always post it on twitter and also post an event on my youtube channel so you can subscribe and get those notifications for when those live streams start up we talk about pretty much everything but the reason why i mentioned a thousand subscribers because if we hit a thousand subscribers because of my chat I am going to be wearing my Chewbacca onesie during an entire live stream when on the day that we hit a thousand subs. So that's something to think about. So what do you guys think? Let me know. Have a great day. And as always, God bless.